So I have a couple of different pages that are visible when I initially oh, set it's up. It's already ready. That's our website that we just generated. That was fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very simple to get up and running with Octane. In this episode of Open at Microsoft, we're talking about the framework that helps you build your application, talking about Octane. And for, for us today, we have Sean with us to let us know more about it. Hi, Sean. Happy to have you on the show. How are you? Good, good. Hi, Frank. It's nice to be on the show. I'm very excited to share a little bit about Octane. You know what? Before we go, because you, I know you have prepared like some slides and demo and stuff like that, tell us more about what it is. What is Octane? It's a cool name, though. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess obviously I'm sort of the original creator of a previous framework called .NET Nuke, which was very popular um, you know, in past decades. Um, I remember that. Yeah, because it was written on web forms. It was written for the very first version of ASP.NET. Um, mm -hmm. And people are still using it today. But um, as time goes on, there needs to be sort of a more modern alternative to .NET Nuke. And I started building Octane in 2018, just when uh, the first version of Blazor came around. Um, and I've been working on it ever since, and it's become super popular and super powerful over time. Oh, lovely, lovely. So it is a CMS. I'm showing you a slide right now. So we, we see it's a CMS, it's Blazor. Oh, it also supports .NET MAUI. That's cool. Yeah, so this is one of the great things about, I guess, the, the tooling from Microsoft in recent years is sort of all the different technologies integrate really well together. And so because of that, it allowed... Octane to take advantage of a lot of the different features that are available now, like Blazor and .NET MAUI. So Octane, yes, it's a content management system. Um, I would call it a, a, a minimal content management system because it only allows um, some minor content management capabilities. Um, but it's also an application framework that you can build applications on top of. Um, and so sort of the tagline is it allows you to build applications and, and not focus so much on infrastructure, which I think is important in modern days. Um, there seems to be a lot of focus on building out infrastructure. Um, whereas like if you want to just focus on building out um, applications for a specific business problem, um, yeah. it's great to have a framework to be able to do that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like when you are a developer, it's fun to focus on the code instead of like all the infrastructure. It, it, some other people may focus on that, but like as a developer, it's nice to focus on like code. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the idea behind the framework, of course, is it accelerates your development effort. Um, and by, it does this by providing a, a good set of application building blocks um, and services. And these would be things that aren't available within the standard um, Blazor or .NET MAUI offerings. So these are you know, value-added services and building blocks that you can utilize in your development efforts. Of course, mm -hmm. it's open source because this is open at Microsoft. So open source show, um, it's licensed under an MIT license and it is a official project that's part of the .NET Foundation. In fact, it's like a, a copyright by the .NET Foundation. Um, some of the features that it offers, and these are what I'm talking about, things that it is capable of, of providing that is not available in sort of standard um, .NET tooling, it's multi-tenant. So it allows you to run multiple instances of the application, like for the for different clients um, within one installation. Um, so that's okay. super powerful. If you want to sort of leverage um, your installation and, and sort of squeeze more out of it, um, it's modular. And, and not just modular from a development perspective, but modular all the way through to deployment. And essentially, like what this means is that you can build an independent application um, and you can deploy it independently from the overall framework. And so it's basically at runtime, Octane pulls together all these different applications and composes them into one UI. Um, so very, very dynamic in that sense. And that's why some people like to think of it as a content management system, because CMSs often have that sort of capability as part of them. Uh, fully localized. Obviously, you can appreciate this living in Quebec, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the user interface is, is fully localized and there's a number of different translation packages that are available so that you can fully localize the UI into your preferred language. Um, we make joke, but honestly, it's nice to 
to have it localized. And it's often a feature that unfortunately doesn't come in the top priority, but it, it had, you know, it, it, you have a good impact, a good impact when you like, we localize and people can pick their language where they Absolutely. are more comfortable and stuff yeah. like that. So it's great. I didn't yeah. think it was as important, but it, when we added localization to .NET Nuke, um, it really increased the audience, like the number of people that were interested in using it. And we ended up having people from like a huge amount of community members from Europe because you know they could like use the software in their own language. Indeed. So it, yeah, it is a fun. very powerful feature. Love that. Yeah. Um, supports multiple databases. So of course, if you're cross-platform, and you're on .NET Core, then you want to support not just SQL Server, but other databases as well. And it supports SQLite and Postgres and MySQL. Um, and then the other cool thing is for those of you who are, I guess, are, are developers that have used Blazor, um, often with Blazor, you have to sort of choose specific configurations when you start the project. Like you want to, you'd have to choose whether you're going to use static render mode or interactive render mode. And you would choose whether or not you want to use WebAssembly or SignalR. Um, and Octane actually kind of abstracts that away. And it allows you to use all of the different Blazor capabilities in the same project. Um, so you can build modules for Octane and they can support all of the different Blazor render modes and hosting models. So pretty powerful. Oh, that's pretty cool. You yeah, really so uh, you use that to the to the extreme all the feature of Blazor. I love that. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and so it, it gives you all the options instead of like, sort of yeah. limiting you to a few options. That's great. Um, why do people use it? Well, like I mentioned off the start, you can build web applications with it. So very rich interactive applications, or you can build websites if you're just interested in building out sites that have you know static content and static assets. Um, and then, of course, another use case, there is still a lot of installations out there that are running .NET Nuke, and Octane is a great migration path for those folks. There's even a, a sort of an automated path that people can take to migrate their data, their content assets uh, into Octane. So you can modernize basically your installation and, and by moving to Octane from DNN. So I think with that, I'm going to transition over and actually do a demo. Excellent. I was about to say, yeah, like we're talking about developer, they love to see code. So let's yeah. jump into it. I love it. Yeah. So um, first of all, OK, so if we start off from sort of where a developer might start. So if you're looking to get access to the Octane source code, you would go to GitHub. And GitHub yeah. has, you know, the repo with all of the source code. And of course, you can clone the repo. You can download a zip file. Um, from the, the, uh, either the main branch or the dev branch. Um, and so this is the great place to start. So this is where you would get the code. Once you've downloaded the code, you can load up the solution file in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. And you'll see here that it has a number of different um, files that are or projects that are part of the overall solution. It's set up very much like a standard Blazor um, solution. That's sort of essentially what Octane is, right? It's a, it's a Blazor solution. Um, and of course, you got the different data providers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the application. This is a brand new installation that I've never installed before. So initially, it's going to show me an installation wizard. So the installation wizard comes up and it asks me sort of how I want to install it. What database do I want to use? And you got all the different options I mentioned previously. I'll just use local DB, which is essentially SQL Server. It asks me to create an initial account. Um, which I'll be able to log in with once um, the application is installed. I'll just use a bogus uh, email address here. There's the notion of templates. So you can create your own site templates, or there's a few different site templates you can choose from. So I'll just use the default. And when I hit install, what it's going to do is it's going to create my database, and it's going to run all the migrations that are necessary for all of the different backend services that are part of Octane. Um, and it's going to read that template, and it's going to scaffold out you know, a set of content. So I have a couple of different pages that are visible when I initially oh, It's up. already ready. That's our website that we just generated. That was fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very simple to get up and running with Octane. That was one of the, the main um, design goals. And so if I want to now log in using that account that I just created previously, 
you'll see that Octane already has all of your authentication already wired up for you too. So created an initial user. Um, and now that I'm logged in, you can see that there's an another page that shows up automatically in my menu for that only private you know, registered users can see. It's got extra content that only registered users can see. And if I hover over this icon over here, I have a control panel that I have access to as an administrator. Um, and if we go into the admin dashboard, there's a whole lot of these, you know, services that are provided for you. So I can manage, you know, settings for my site. I can manage all the different pages that are part of my site. I have the full like user management, role management. I have dynamic profiles. I can upload files. Um, so there's a, a huge amount of functionality that's available for you as a developer out of the box that you don't have to build yourself. And... You can build, of course, custom extensions to Octane that then leverage these same services. Um, from a content management perspective, you've also got the ability to go into a so-called edit mode, where each of these different regions on this page are editable pieces of content. And so I can go in to edit the content, and I have a rich text editor I can use, or a raw uh, HTML editor. Um, okay, that's well, this is great. Content. If if like uh, once the, the the website is deployed, if you have like a subset of user writers and stuff like that, they could Correct. go on the website, change bl blog posts or article or whatever about your company and things like that without having to like code. They're just using like yeah. a, the interface you built. That's yeah, great. So, yeah, so that's like sort of the content management aspect of things from the developer's perspective. If I go into the admin dashboard and we go into mono module management, um, right now I have, you know, a couple modules installed. Octane also has a third party ecosystem where other people have created modules that run in Octane. And so by going into module management, I can see that there's a bunch of different modules that are available. Um, there's open source ones and there's also commercial modules that are available as well. Um, and so I can install these just by clicking download and it'll download the bits directly into my installation. Um, and then I restart my app and it'll install them and they'll be immediately available. Um, oh, that's great. So you could really like, like, uh, like say, I don't want to names any, any, any others, but like, like popular CM, CMS that were, yeah. were yeah. you know, you're probably going to say WordPress or Drupal <laughs> or like, yeah, absolutely. So it has that sort of plug-in capability that you can obtain functionality that's sort of pre-built for you. And a lot of people like that, right? They don't want to build everything from scratch. They want to oh, yeah. use some yeah. existing things that already have been built. Um, if I want to create my own um, application, um, I can go ahead and I can go into module management. And let's call this Open at Microsoft Test. And so this will be a, a new custom module that I'm going to create. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to choose the default module template, um, and it's going to scaffold a whole set of code for me at this location. So I'm going to say create module, and it used the template to scaffold code, and it's used the you know the attributes that I provided here to customize the code for my needs. All right, so then yeah. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to go into my file system, and here's the set of code that it scaffolded for me, created a solution file, created a bunch of projects. So I can go ahead and I can open that in Visual Studio. And so it, it scaffolded out like a lot of um, different assets for me. So it's got, basically it's built the same exact way that the Octane framework is built. It's got a client project, a server project, and a shared project. Um, it also has a package project, which is handling some post build steps to copy assemblies to the appropriate location so that Octane is able to find them. So if I go ahead and I build this, so I can rebuild this solution, um, it'll build all of the code that's here, and then it'll deploy the assemblies that are created into my Octane uh, server folder. Um, mm -hmm. And then if I go ahead and run this, it's going to run Octane, same exact instance that we... Uh, already just looked at. But on startup, it recognized that there was this new module that we had just created. Um, and so if I go into the admin dashboard, module management, we're going to see that it created this test module, which was the one we just created. Um, if I look at the information, right, it's open at Microsoft module.test. 
Um, and if I go back to one of my pages in my site and I go into my control panel, I can choose that module and I can say add it to the page and it's fully functional. So it's, it's a module that basically, you know, you can add an item to it and it basically has a backend database table that it created for you as part of a migration. I can save information to it. I can edit that information and I can delete the information as well. So that's a fully functional module. So the idea is that this gets developers up and running very quickly, and then they can customize that code um, based on the example that's there to do whatever they want in terms of their own custom functionality. Oh, yeah, that's great. So like even like a little teams of developer could like quickly build an application, uh, like a website, functional website, customize it, like the look, add maybe like specific functionality for the purpose of their company. And like then like super user or admin user will be able to like add information and all that very easily. That's pretty cool. That's right. Uh, the time is flying, Sean. So uh, I think you have also great documentation, right? We'll, we'll make sure to put all the link into uh, the description so people can find your GitHub repo. You have okay. a lot of documentation also, correct? Correct. And yeah, obviously there's like, there's probably, you know, too much to share in a short episode of, of Open at Microsoft, but um, I, I'm happy, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to share even a small glimpse of what Octane has to offer. And I would encourage people to uh, check it out. And um, we just had a release last week along with .NET 9. So Octane 6 is now available and it's fully compatible with uh, .NET 9. Um, Congrats, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and so uh, definitely check it out. And uh, you're accepting, you are, are you accepting the contribution? Like if people go on Absolutely, the- Absolutely, yeah. The, the so that is one thing that we've been lucky um, over time. So we have 56 different contributors that have contributed to Octane um, since it was created and contributions are always appreciated. Um, so if someone wants to get involved, I think the best way to get involved in open source at first is just get familiar with it, start using the application, right? Yeah. And indeed. then if you find any issues or you wanna log some enhancements, you would log them you know, in the issues area um, so that you can get some feedback about them. Are they indeed an issue or are they a valuable enhancement that somebody else could get value from? And then if you have the motivation to even go further with it and implement it, then absolutely submit some pull requests. Oh, I've got a it. bunch of pull it. requests that are lined up here from different users right now that I need to review. So, um. <laughs> so we'll let you go then so you could have a look into that. It was right. a pleasure to have you on the show. Very happy. It was indeed a lot of content, but I think now with that, people can be interested and curious to dig more and go check that GitHub repo, check that documentation. And I'm sure you also have like some example that like, I think just like running it locally, like it's scaffold already and it's ready to use. So uh, thank you a lot for coming and sharing all that with us today. Yeah. No, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.